Welcome to yet another episode of etbranddecree.com. Be positive. Uh, in this show, we talk to high-achieving CMOs to share their career journey as they traversed various paths and reached the pinnacle of a marketing organization. So today we have Dipali. Hi, Dipali. Hi, Ambi. Dipali Nair, thank you for joining us on the Be Positive show. Uh, you have won multiple awards, multiple accolades. Just to read out a few of them, CMO of the Year, Tech Marketer of the Year. I think I was there at the event when you got the award. Yes. 50, 50 Most Influential Women, Marketing Influencer of the Year, and I can go on and on. Uh, in your career, uh, you must have faced a number of challenges, number of obstacles, maybe rejections. It will be great for our young viewers to get a ringside view of your journey. The show is about the importance of being positive irrespective of what the world throws at you. So thank you very much once again for joining us. So before we get into your career, I just want to go on a, on a memory drive. So I want you to tell the listener something about your childhood, your school, your education. I remember in social media, you had shared a pretty nice, I think almost a sepia toned photograph of uh, a bunch of girls in, I think, scout uniform or something like that. So what is the backstory? What was your childhood, your schooling like? Ambi, uh, so my dad was in the military engineering services. By the time I was seven, I had lived in five cities and changed three schools. Uh, so that's the, that's the little backstory of my life. And life has always been like that. And the scout uh, picture that you saw, uh, you'll be surprised. I did my graduation in English literature and mathematics from Government Girls College, Sri Ganganagar. That's where the picture was from. Ah, Sri Ganganagar, we have to talk about it. Yeah, please continue. Yeah. Yes. And chances are that you have gone to Sri Ganganagar as part of your sales training when I must have been a little baby going probably to the same grocer, you know, asking for some candy or the other. I remember, you know, when you, when you posted Sri Ganganagar, it kind of, you know, as a part of my sales orientation when I joined advertising, I was sent on a two-week uh, or a three-week uh, sales uh, orientation, May, and the route which was picked for me was Rajasthan. So I had to meet the sales rep at a, at a distributor point in Barmer, if you please. So I had to figure out where the hell was Barmer. Yes. I managed to reach there and then I spent 15 days with him. We went to Savai Madhopur, Jodhpur, Sri Ganganagar, Biyavar, Barmer, the work. So this was 1979 when you were probably in school. Yes, I was, Zambi, uh, clearly. Uh, and so from there on, Ambi, you know, the interesting thing over there and, you know, life, which is so different, I think uh, that's what is important about my childhood, that I've had a very eclectic one, you know, given uh, if today I talk about it. Uh, my parents paid all of 250 rupees for my graduation fee because the girls' education in uh, Rajasthan was free. Uh, you know, this was just the examination fee that they paid to Ajmer University. Uh, every uh, every summers for the two months that we used to have school vacation, uh, we used to go off to my nani's place in Amritsar. So I've had a huge Punjabi influence also. Um, and I come from a very, very uh, hardcore Marwadi family from my mother's side of the family. And I remember that at breakfast, lunch, dinner, all conversations are about business. So, you know, when I look back and I say, you know, where did I all pick it up? I, I think I picked it up there. You know, I distinctly remember one of my cousins when I was about 16 or 17, he realized that I did not know how to count notes together. Like, okay, bundles of them. He was like, I'm ashamed that you're my cousin. I have to teach you how to con count them like a proper Marwari, you know? So I was taught how to count notes properly. I still do that. Uh, so I think... Uh, one side, the whole military engineering services background, other side, you know, the very hardcore Marwari background uh, has made me, you know, probably into a person who can strike a conversation with anyone in any room. So this was schooling, right? And, and then and then you did uh, uh, undergrad in uh, Ajmer, was it? Or The undergrad was also in Sri Ganganagar. Wow. Uh, and then I came to do my MBA to Bombay. So I passed out of Sydney in 1993. 
Okay, so something, is there something interesting you remember from your MBA days? And, I mean, that must have been a culture shock, right? Coming from, at least I remember that time, Sri Ganganagar was a very small town, one road. Uh, I think it was 25 shops. We covered it in one, one beat. Uh, from Sri Ganganagar being airdropped into the poshest of posh locations in Mumbai, Sobo, so to speak, Sydney. So yeah. anything you remember from your MBA days? And, and yeah, so you know, technically I should have been a very shy, introvert person, uh, but I wasn't. You know, dad had, I think, uh, probably filled me up with, you know, tons of spunk. Uh, I was a very fearless person. Uh, and I think I looked forward to coming to Bombay because I knew that that opened up the vistas for me. I mean, one of the things that I remember actually, a very sweet thing about Bombay those days was that it was a very safe city for girls. Uh, you know, when you are, when you've grown up in a, a North Indian small town, uh, eve teasing, not feeling safe is, you know, just about the part of your growing up. And you come to Bombay and you're implanted into a city where you can go out in the evening and nobody looks at you is actually a huge free freedom, uh, you know, uh, feeling that you have. So that's my earliest memory of Bombay. And I think that's what has made me very loyal to Bombay for the last 30 years that I have been here now. Tell, tell me, were you a hostelite or did you stay with a friendly aunt or something? No, no, I was a hostelite oh. at, a, at a place called Savitri Devi Phule Hostel, which was right on Marine Drive next to the aquarium. So I was really staying in a posh area, Ambi. Yeah, and you were walking to college every day, probably. Yeah. Yes, we were walking to college. We would go to bachelor's to have ice cream once a weekend. That's the only thing we could afford. Beautiful memories of, I think, uh, getting culturally oriented uh, to corporate world, which I had no idea of before, because we used to have a lot of guest faculty coming in, you know, from the corporate world, coming in, teaching us. And uh, of course, uh, uh, then uh, me meeting my husband now, but then he was my classmate. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Rajesh was also there, right? Yeah. And, and I mean, actually, Sydney has produced some pretty remarkable uh, business leaders. You know, I remember, I think, uh, Ashish Basin, who's a yes. chairman of uh, yes. AGs, is also from uh, Sydney. You're from Sydney, Rajesh from Sydney. Hey, anything you remember from Sydney, which something, you know, some disappointment, uh, some, uh, you know, setback or something which you had to face? Or was it all a bed of roses for you? It wasn't a bed of roses, Ambi, but you tend to look back at those things and have a little laugh about it, you know. Uh, it must have been, you know, hell of a, a disappointment or embarrassment at that point of time. But 30 years later, you just look back at it and laugh. And I still remember I did my summers at the Taj. Okay. And I was made to send, uh, uh, you know, I had to send out uh, faxes for setting up appointments uh, with some 30, uh, you know, resellers of uh, Taj properties. Uh, I don't think I asked anybody. I sent the faxes Ulta and waited for four days for nothing to ever come back. And I was, mean, you sent the blank pages as fact. I sent the blank pages. Okay. And I then. That's a new waiting. one. This is superb. This is superb. Okay. And then I'm waiting and I'm asking my guide and saying, listen, nobody is responding back. I've sent 30 of them. I don't know how to set up appointments. Nobody is calling me up. And he was like, are you sure? And then I started calling one or two and I realized that they haven't received anything from me. I finally figured what I had done. Uh, so hell of an embarrassment at that point of time. Uh, but I think I just look back at it and say, okay, you know, we did this. <laughs> this is, you know, uh, Dipali, this is such a funny story. It, it's a bit reminded me of this slightly elderly gentleman standing and, he, and he's, you know, trying to get something ostensibly trying to get it photocopied. And this uh, girl probably management trainee like you walks up and says, oh, sir, I'll do it for you. And she slides it in and presses the button. And then he says four copies. She says, oh, this is a shredder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ambi, you just made that up. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, no, this is a real joke. I mean, it's a, it's a joke. I mean, I don't think it really happened, but yeah. it's possible this can happen. You know, some gray haired old dude like me standing there figuring out how to get something photocopied. Yeah. And the young girl comes and says, yeah, of course I can help you, sir. And he, she shoves the paper and presses the button. And yeah. this, this four copies. He says, wow, it's all gone. It's all shredded. <laughs> Too good. Okay. So, but you know, Ambi, I have uh, fax machines and I have another story to tell. You know, so I joined Tata Motors then, uh, you know, after I finished uh, graduation. And, uh, you know, uh, so I used to travel. I used to be part of the sales team, Western region, spare part sales at that. And I used to travel, you know, left, right and center. 
And somebody in office, the admin team would always send a fax machine to the dealer's place, okay, to say, okay, you know, so so and so is coming, uh, pick her up at the airport or stuff like that, right? And eventually, they'd send, you know, my name, the flight number, time, etc. would go in the fax machine, okay? And you know that the print quality on the other side was patchy at most times, right? So my name was Dipali Garg, okay, then, right? And the L and I can easily become a small K. Nobody could ever imagine that Tata Motors would have a woman person, a, a woman in sales, okay? So invariably, when I would land up every place the first time, the patti at the airport used to say Deepak Garg. <laughs> okay? It was never the Padi Garg. And they were all used to be surprised about, you know, who they have come to, uh, you know, pick up. Those were the days, Ambi. And out walks this diminutive girl. Yes. You know, and they say, Ari, aap, aap Tata Motors truck wale company mein kaam karte ho? Huh. Bilkul, Tata truck, Tata truck, you know, nobody used to say Tata Motors, wo baad mein aaya hai. Telco was the name, you know, at that point of time. But uh, Ami, you know, to tell you this, I was one of the first two female management trainees Tata Motors ever hired. Wow, really? Yeah. Yes, yeah. And what I keep... You, were you not, were you kind of, were you not worried that you're joining this truck company as a management trainee? Was it, was there some fear going through your head? I think they made it, uh, uh, you know, in the placement conversation that they came and did, uh, you know, they made it clear that they are now getting into cars. So uh, that time they had just come out with Tata Estate. If you remember the car that they had built on the truck chassis almost. Very famous Tata Estate. I still Very remember. famous Tata Estate, right? So funny, they made... story about the funny story about Tata Estate. Okay. Is that and... uh, Kunal, Kunal Kapoor, who used to make ads for us, Tata Motors, uh, wanted Tata Estate because apparently uh, Shashi Kapoor, mm. who was pretty, you know, pretty heavy those days, found it a very good car to get in and get out of. You know, in ingress and egress in a Tata car is always is much very- better than that of any of these international cars. So, uh, so yeah, continue. So, so yeah. they picked you, and then and then you decided. Yeah, but they made it. They but they made it clear at the campus they were looking to hire uh, non-engineers first of all. Otherwise, you know, only engineers would apply to Tata Motors. Okay, yeah. I okay. was also non-engineer, and then they were open. I think to the whole diversity aspect, and not just diversity from a gender perspective, but I think from a point of view perspective because they knew they were getting into cars. Lovely. So that was a great story. And then what happened? You went to Mariko after that? And how was the Mariko experience? Ambi, I came to you and worked for you first before going to Mariko. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You came to FC Biulka. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, tell us. I, 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 I'm getting it mixed up. I thought you came from uh, Mariko. Okay, you went from Ulka to Mariko. Okay, great. Yeah. So how come the switch yeah, from Tata Motors trucks to advertising? Such a fuzzy uh, business to get into. I actually in between worked in telecom with BPL Mobile and once they got their second license, they were moving the headquarters to Bangalore. And I mean, like I said earlier, I'm in love with Bombay City. Uh, and of course, the fact that I had family here, I didn't want to move. I think that's been the story of my life. I think, uh, you know, every time somebody's asked me to move cities, I move jobs. So <laughs> <laughs> they were moving to Bangalore. No, no, they, they know what to do to make you move up to the company. <laughs> they, that, okay, you have to go to Chicago. I say, so bye-bye. <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, uh, Anita Bogle, who used to head strategic planning, uh, you know, for you, uh, she used to work with a research agency who was also working with uh, me. You might know her, Shobha Prasad, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, so Shobha uh, told uh, uh, Anita about me. Anita and I met. And then very quickly, I met Shashi uh, and uh, you all decided to hire me. And here I am so many years later, remembering that those four years that I spent at FCB were perhaps the most fun that I ever had at my job. They were also the most learning time that I had, uh, uh, you know, Ambi. And I think I probably made the best friends and I probably have the best role models also from there. No, that's that you're being very, you're being very kind. And I hope. You're not saying this because we are friends and we work together. So something, you know, something you remember from, I remember you worked in the strategic planning side of Ulka and we had almost 20 people working in it and we had invested heavily in it. Something, I think, I think you were involved with the woman mood, right? Which was a pioneering study. So tell, tell the, tell the viewers something about this woman mood study, which you had anchored. 
Yeah. I mean, I want to tell you three things from that. Okay. One, of course, is the fact that I got to learn, uh, you know, mind and mood. Uh, I think it is the mainstay of how I probably look at consumers even today. How I do my research, even being as a CMO, you know, which is, uh, uh, you know, looking at the customer and uh, talking to them in their natural habitat. I think that's become second nature to me. And I got fantastic training on qualitative, uh, you know, uh, research, the various other techniques and tools also. Uh, but I think this one, uh, the most brilliant one. And I think which agency or which company gave you the liberty to say, Dipali, go across the length and breadth of the country, you know, go to Patiala, go to Kanpur, go to Delhi, go to Jaipur, go to Hyderabad, go to Chennai, meet with women and just come back and tell us what they're thinking. You, you, went, to those, you went to all those places. Nice. Yeah, I did. You sent me. <laughs> yeah. I'm still wondering, you know, how did we get the budget for that? Obviously, obviously <laughs> those were the days where agencies had the money to spend on, on these kind of things, which you know, no client was going to pay for. There was no money coming from any client, right? Absolutely. But Ambi, I think we did good. Uh, we did good because I think the kind of insights that we drew out from Woman Mood made you uh, call me back and uh, do it all over again for you the second time. But I think one of the most, the second thing that I want to tell you, and the most interesting thing was about, I learned that, you know, with that study is what's very important to note is also what the consumers don't say. So if you remember, we had a question in that woman mood where we asked the women saying, what would you like to do on a dream day? If you had like dream day, what would you do? And the interesting thing was that they spoke about everything else but cooking. Mm, and that's where we pick this up that while they may not want to relinquish control yeah, they yeah. may not want to relinquish control of cooking ever because that's the only task at home that they are 100% exclusively getting credit for but in their heart of hearts they don't like and that I think for you know the brands that we used to work with which is you know Sundrop and Acto Popcorn and uh, you know we were Amul, adopting yeah. Healthy World Data, Amul uh, and you thought the third thing, Ambi, which you guys always remember me for, and Nitin remembers because Nitin was part of that meeting, is when we went and did our first presentation to Henkel, uh, you know, to the absolute senior management team, you know, the CEO. They all got up and clapped for us. Yeah, Satish, yeah, I remember Satish Kumar was yeah, CEO, yeah, and, and Ranju was there, I think. Yeah. Ranju was there, you know, they clapped for us. So we said, okay, we are on to something really good. We've done a remarkable job, you know. Nice. That's so, actually actually very nice of the client to acknowledge uh, yeah. the agency's work. I wish this, they do more of it. Yes. We stand up and say, yeah, guys, you know, we learned a lot. You've done a great job. So thank you. That was very fulfilling. Uh, now, from there, you went to Mariko. Yes. From advertising to Marico, and then uh, how was the Marico XP? I think you worked on Medicare, right? I remember we which... and Safola. So for, oh yeah, so for as well. And then how was that experience? In fact, Ambi, I got hired because of that, because this one of the Sundrop clients went and joined Marico. And when they were looking for somebody who is, because Sapola was looking at extensions and we had done a lot of work on women mood and we'd done a lot of work on Sundrop, you know, when they were discussing saying, okay, who do we hire? Who understands Indian women very well? Who understands, you know, the whole area of cooking very well? And, you know, who understands foods very well? I think my name got recommended and that's how they headhunted me. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, so then I spent uh, uh, more than two years at Marico doing uh, Safola and uh, Medica, very fulfilling again. Uh, I think the way they run the business, you really become a PNL expert on your brand. Mm. Uh, you know, you run it in a, a, a very, very numbers fashion. So therefore, you look at pricing, therefore, you look at, uh, you know, margins, uh, the profitability of the brand is extremely important. You know, uh, you learn how to maneuver all the piece of marketing to ensure uh, that you deliver profit, you deliver profits. I got the opportunity because of Medica to work on a lot of new product uh, launches. And then once I was, uh, you know, pregnant with Krishnanj, I actually took on the job of the innovation champion, you know, so I worked on their baby care range that they were looking at, um, you know, from the oils perspective. And then I looked at Medica, I launched a Medica hair oil when it only used to be a medical shampoo brand so a lot of uh, you know Erwan consulting was uh, actually you know the innovation partner for us and I think a lot of learning that I had on the innovation side new product launches side which has stayed with me you know subsequently so I launched you know pro, uh, portfolio management services at HSBC I of course launched LNT insurance the brand and I set up the e-commerce business there you know I again did an identity change you know at Mahindra holidays so that you know that 
ball i think got rolling uh, over there at uh, marico for all the uh, subsequent this new launch uh, you know uh, area that i kind of got the opportunity to work on so tell me how was it how was the experience working in financial services after working in a hardcore fmcg company you know so the fantastic thing was and this is uh, you know sanjay prakash the ceo at hsbc asset management who hired me uh, when i went and met him after my break so i was on a sabbatical you know with krishnansh uh, you know i was away from work for a while uh, so when i went to work with him his brief apparently to the uh, placement consultant was that i want somebody who has both service industry experience and if him cg experience and if they have advertising experience it be it be really well it will be really good and my cv fitted that bill you know so when i went there i was very candid with him and i told him i said i don't know anything about investments uh, you know barring one investment that i have done in a mutual fund because a, a colleague of mine now works with city bank as an rm this is raka sena we are talking about ambi uh, i said i've never even invested in a mutual fund and you are you're making me the vice president for both marketing as well as products okay so you know uh, i still remember sanjay telling me this is saying dipali your intelligence will pick up new things you've done that before and i said yeah i worked in various categories and i picked it up always so this is rocket science to hai nahi na so uh, i think that set uh, set me up uh, you know uh, for confidence and of course i think um, you know uh, you one knew that one had to work very hard because it was a new category so i find uh, my first 6 months always very grueling i make them grueling for myself you know that hard coded effort of going and meeting consumers even when there is no consumer study even when there is no market research even when there is no formal qualitative research going on me setting this target for myself that i will go and meet with at least 30 to 50 customers just myself you know in the first few weeks that i join i think is a rigor that i still employ and i did that even at uh, uh, you know ibm where i joined 3 years ago and and and, and then what about uh, that stint in uh, mahindra holidays that again is a very different kind of a company right uh, selling yeah. holidays so how was that was it again seen as service industry experience kind of is fungible yeah so I me mean, after my sabbaticals after my two sabbaticals is the only time when placement consultants have had to help me find jobs otherwise i kind of just get invited you know i don't even get head hunted i just kind of get invited and say good okay you, good you. Why, why don't you come what in the store should know this is our best right i mean the best thing is that yeah. you never write a cv no i yeah yeah and i you know i do the podcast and apurva purohit also said it she says i've never written a cv dipali you know yeah. uh, i won't say i haven't written it because they will ask you for your formal papers when they decide to meet with you but but they invite you and that i told you i got the fcb job because of shobha and then i got the marico job because you know a client brand manager moved and similarly once again over here uh, you know uh, uh, swami swami nathan he recommended my uh, you know name to uh, mahindra holidays for the simple reason that at lnt insurance we knew that at some point of time we wanted to sell the business i had spent 4 years there i was doing you know e-commerce i was managing the pnl there i was looking after customer service and i was looking after uh, you know brand and marketing and i want the brief at mahindra holidays was exactly this my predecessor had come from unilever they said we want somebody who understands brand and very well and understand service industry very well okay and they also said that the person has managed digital marketing and e-commerce to, because that's the business aspect that they were really struggling with we would really like you know this kind of a profile and they were not doing formal search you know they were really therefore with this brief going and saying okay who in the world has kind of done that and swami recommended my name uh, you know to them and that's how i got hired at yeah, mind the so holidays i think i think for people who may not be aware uh, swami is a former direct marketing uh, guy and he runs a very very successful data analytics company and they work with a lot of successful financial service company swami nathan a dear friend i try you know i actually tried hiring him but by then he had decided to set up his own company so there are many stories uh, yeah. with swami uh, so and then now with ibm uh, you're not again uh, you're in a job which normally only is given to engineers and then you are from what i know you're far from a geek uh, uh, how did how did the ibm thing happen uh, was it a bit like they also wanted someone who was not like us you know so uh, ambi i think in between the time that i worked with you and then afterwards when i worked in all the different places especially managing the digital pnls 
I think I've developed a geeky bone. You know, I can I can talk AIML, I can talk CRM, I can get you know uh, technology. You do Python programming? No, that I can't, <laughs> and I don't need to. <laughs> so uh, you know, but but if you give me a challenge, I think I'll come back in three months and do it for you. <laughs> In fact, so, you know, I should. There, there is a Python book lying here, and I and I bought it a couple of years ago because I I listened to Ajit at some, at some talk, and he said every self-respecting person should know how, know how to code. You know, so I am not really self-respecting. So I bought the book, but I haven't actually started. You know, going through it. But yeah. So any any interesting challenges at IBM because IBM is really the B two B marketer uh, of great repute. I mean, the kind of campaigns they run. uh of course uh, you know uh what is that small planet campaign and then of course uh, all the other great campaigns they've done and, and and their website is always fantastic uh, really epitome you know i remember we used ibm website as a kind of a benchmark when we used to do the analysis for tcs and what tcs should be doing so ibm so tell so tell us about ibm how has it been it's a huge company going through its own you know challenges and uh, you're there running their marketing in india so tell us ambi you know i think the the marketing the performance marketing the contribution to business the sales and marketing collaboration all those are challenges that come in every job in different uh, you know uh, parts of it but i think uh, why ibm really uh, respects you know uh, me being there is that i also inherited a culture challenge uh you know the team was going through a down phase uh we are very very serious about our employee engagement scores i inherited a team which was all in reds uh, probably the lowest uh, scores in the world um i actually have a business coach i worked with her uh you know on on from my personal side and that was the challenge that was handed over to me and uh, happy to report ambi that within about uh, you know 18 months the scores were green uh and in 24 months which is november last year uh you know uh, we had a in, uh, employee engagement index of 96.4 which is the highest in the world my team wow. so uh you know the and 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 i must also give credit uh to a lot that i've picked up along the way from lovely bosses that i've had which i must say i'm not saying that because you're there and you know <laughs> Nitin Nitin Bhagwat always gets to hear about it when I tell him. I said, "You're my gold standard of a boss." Him. Then I think uh, uh, Joydi Roy, uh, you know, at L N T Insurance. I think again, fantastic individual, you know, who has coached me, and you know, taken me under his wing for me to learn all the things that you need to do to set up a new business. I mean, we we did. A, I was the twelfth employee at L N T Insurance, and we, uh, you know, set up such a huge and successful business on the uh, you know insurance side. uh you know even uh when i work with iifl wealth where i work with yatin uh you know in particular yatin shah uh you know the things that i picked up from him uh in terms of how to manage people and how to structure uh you know incentives how to motivate uh you know a different uh, 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 you know class of people i would say you know uh, the sales team that they had i think very very interesting things that i picked up over the years from leaders in terms of how to motivate the teams how to take care of the teams how to put employees for and how to build a great culture great so thank you i think uh, that was uh, terrific uh, terrific uh, the way you you know i think viewers will be should take a lot out of your conversation of how you navigated coming from a small town uh, arts background a big bad world of mumbai doing an mba and then getting into automobiles trucks and then moving to advertising moving to fmcg and then to financial services now with probably the number one uh it uh company in the world right yeah. and, and running their cmo so thank you uh dipali that was really enjoyable and and it's interesting that through the career you remember so many of your your mentors your coaches and the fact that you used a coach gladens my heart because i am a certified coach myself plug plug uh mm -hmm. and and it and, and it's it's good to good for you know it's great for high performing executives to say look i took the help of a coach yes. to fly even higher and that's that's a that's a great thing so let me come to the last few questions um, what would be your favorite b2b campaign ibm's campaigns and currently my team is running a campaign called call for coach 
for the developers it's about a, a you know a hackathon that we run for the benefit of society and we've got sonam wangchuk and ashish vidyarthi as influencers for that campaign a uh, fantastic campaign we're doing very well india is going to show up in the ibm global map because of that campaign great i think we we do have a lot of coders in india and hopefully it's like a code jam right so you will hopefully pick up a lot of smart people i remember we used to run that uh, little thing at mba schools right uh, fcb ulka Yes. What is it called? Comstrat. Comstrat. And I remember we used to promise the team which wins an yeah. automatic placement with the agency. I remember. I think yeah. Tiwari, Naveen Tiwari joined us uh, after winning that. Uh, so, one favorite movie, one favorite book, one favorite music album. Uh, one favorite movie would be Pretty Woman. I think for the sheer fact of how she transforms herself and what happens to her. I think the story of transformation is uh, interesting for me. a uh, favorite book uh, has to be lean in by sheryl sandberg and i would actually urge people to read the book not just from the lens of women leaders and women managers but also from the lens of how the how behavioral economics and how uh, consumer psyche is being explained over there if you just use these two lenses you know for the examples and cases that she's given in the book i think it's a very interesting read so if you've read it before read it again to think of you know working women as a, a, a segment and uh, look at them as a consumer segment favorite movie i'm a bollywood buff uh, uh, ambi uh, completely so i love uh, uh, you know bollywood movies but i think recently and off late i'm actually uh, watching ott considerably and i'd like to mention to everybody to watch madam secretary and if parents can watch it with their daughters i think it's a fantastic role modeling tv american uh, you know series on the julia uh, margoyles right uh, she sorry? julia uh, the actress is I don't remember her name. No. Uh, yeah, I remember. I've, I've, I've seen. Uh, yeah. I've seen. I think I've seen. There are a couple of seasons and all, all fantastic episodes. Yeah. Oh, great, great. And uh, any tech device you splurged on? Um, I'm be all the time. I, I, you know, in fact, in my family. So this is between husband and wife and the child, uh, who's a teenager now. We have laptops strewn around. Uh, we probably have twelve or fifteen mobile phones strewn around. Uh, we all have studio quality uh, backgrounds and lighting uh, and sound equipment. You know, I do a podcast, so uh, you know our uh, home offices for all three of us are uh, completely studio quality. The son is also into gaming, so tech splurge in my home is not a splurge. It is a necessity. It is about adding productivity to us. You know, it's about it's about getting ready for the future. So, what have you bought, uh, specially, which you really think it's a great investment uh, during during the pandemic or later, right? Uh, <clears throat> so, I've got to show it. I think the Blue Yeti mic. Wow. Uh, I think it's a it's a great investment because uh, I don't get interfered. I know don't need to do earphones and headphones, and the sound quality is great because of this. Right, because you know, I I went and bought one of those AKG uh, mics. Uh, it's a great mic, but the problem is it picks up too much ambient sound. You know, it picks up, you know, there's a fan rotating. It picks up the fan sound. So, in fact, right now I'm not using it. Ideally, if I use it, my voice becomes a little richer. But I but I don't but I don't uh, use it all the time. Only use it when I'm doing doing short recordings uh, where I can switch off the fan for a. Again, I have to give credit. You know, I I just. I think I just have this nice set of people that I know everywhere who recommend things to me. So Varun Dogirala, who runs the advertising is dead podcast, yeah. I was a guest on his show, and then when I decided to do a podcast, I had called him up for tips, and you know, uh, this was a mic that he recommended to me, and he said, "Dipali, just fix it, and you will, you know, just not face a problem again." Nice, nice. Uh, okay, so coming to the last few questions, um, final advice to young marketing professionals who will be watching this show. uh read 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 people don't i think uh, uh, the youngsters should just read secondly have an attitude of being a lifelong learner you know a uh, lot of the times we feel that we've done enough and we don't need to learn i think that uh, and the third one very important uh, is that uh, don't judge your customer i know a lot of us are uh, all right on giving empathy to the customer but a lot of us judge the customer and i once again want to just give a small example when we were working on the baby care thing for children i did a lot of house visits of uh, you know uh, people with small kids and hygiene levels across india are very different you know small cities big cities north india versus you know east india versus south india and you can get judgmental to say okay you know that household was not so clean and how do they really bring up their children 
And that's when I learned that you can't be judgmental about even hygiene because, you know, you will have some, uh, you know, somebody coming from the Scandinavian countries and find us in my home, uh, you know, not so hygienic. So I always give this example to uh, younger folks in colleges to say, do not judge your customer, get to know your customer, but don't judge them. Great. So also last bit, uh, B2B is normally is not seen as as exciting as B2C. Uh, any comments on that? I think uh, you and I have discussed it separately on a phone call once. Uh, and uh, you gave me great advice because I used to say marketing is marketing, B2B or B2C doesn't matter. But I think, uh, you know, I'd like to elaborate here. Uh, I think the world of B2C and B2B is actually, uh, you know, uh, colliding. If you look at the MarTech stack, if you look at uh, truly realizing segment of one as a customer, if you look at real and per- real time and personalization, if you look at the concepts of the future, you are actually you will find B two B marketers much ahead of time and much advanced. You know the uh, the whole area of performance marketing where you have to prove to the corporation that you're delivering so much percentage ROI on every dollar that you're spending is happening in the B2B domain and especially happening in the B2B uh, tech domain, right? And when I come from financial services where I have set up these businesses or at Mahindra Holidays where I set up these businesses where it would get measured, you know, where I would deliver the PNL, you were actually starting over there, you know, on these, uh, uh, you know, concepts. So I find if you look at what is going to be the future of marketing, which is in the digital marketing and performance marketing domain, really, you will find no difference between B2C and B2B marketing, except that, uh, you know, perhaps the numbers will be very different. The only place where, you know, you would do this very differently and which may not be, uh, you know, similar to, uh, you know, financial services or travel is the businesses which are born on the internet. There, of course, you know, uh, marketing is segregated in very various different fashions. And the disciplines in marketing that I spoke about may not even actually be under marketing in those businesses. So I think the structure and the org structure of what marketing and CMOs are doing is very different across uh, different industries now. Yeah, I think I think what you said, uh, that's a topic for probably your podcast or my show later. It's this whole challenge between performance marketing and brand marketing. I remember we've talked about it in detail. And I I still maintain that performance marketing is really fine-tuned and you know what you're doing, but brand marketing is really spray and pray. And there is always a question of attribution, allocation, and measurement problem. But that's uh, that's a different topic. That's a different topic for a different uh, different podcast or a different show. So let me just say thank you, uh, Dipali, for uh, sparing the time and taking us on this nice ride from... Sri Ganga Nagar to South Bombay to all the various uh, assignments you've handled and you built your career and you're so approachable, uh, you know, ready to come and talk and share your wisdom with our young viewers. So I want to say two things to conclude. One is please look up my podcast, Being CEO with Dipali Nair. Nair is spelled with a double A. You'll find it. It's on Google. Uh, it's on avas.com. The second thing, Ambi, I want to say, and what I didn't say earlier, you know, you know that you're one of my role models. The amount of books that you've written, I've not even begun to write one. And you know how I admire that. And I think how you've lived your life and how you've captured the experiences, you know, um, and the life that you're leading now, which is, you know, spending time with students, spending time advising companies, you're a complete role model for, you know, us. So when you say that I have found time to come and speak with you, it's my privilege to come and speak with you, Ambi. You're being, you're being very kind. Uh, thank you very much, Dipali. Once again, on behalf of uh, etbrandicry.com and the Be Positive with Ambi Parmeshwaran show, thank you once again and God bless. Doing your podcast, keep writing, keep sharing. Uh, I think uh, you're making the world a better place. So thank you very much, Dipali. Dipali.